Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Manero with J-Man Speaks coming to you live with J-Man's Ed Talks number 16. That's right. We're talking about public relations today, and we are here with Nadine Crimo, public relations expert, I'm going to call her today. Nadine, you want to just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Hi, all. Nadine, uh, Crimo General here. Uh, I've been at Dixon Schwabel for just about nine years in the fall. Um, overseeing public relations team, working on crisis communications. Uh, previous, I guess I'll go kind of uh, backwards here on the on the bio. Uh, previous to joining Dixon Schwabel, I spent five years on the advanced public affairs team with the American Red Cross. So I was traveling across the country, uh, helping support disaster services and crisis communications. Uh, shortly before that, did a brief stint at the University of Rochester and uh, obtained my undergrad in communications from St. John Fisher College. Nice awesome. to be here. Thank you. Thank you for thank you. Thank you for being here. You know, it's uh, I just I want to point this out with J Man's Ed Talks. Our only goal is to educate, entertain, and energize realtors in a certain topic of interest and we can't possibly know everything. So we like to bring in subject matter experts, even if they're outside the real estate space. I happen to have known Nadine since the third grade, maybe third or fifth grade, something like that. And if you didn't hear her bio, like she's from Rochester, New York, but she has traveled the country doing public relations and she has worked with big, huge grant brands like PGA and like, you know, all, all kinds of things that much bigger than the average realtor. Okay, but you know, today we're talking about real estate, and I, I think I think why not start with like what is public relations? Because I think a lot of people don't understand exactly what it is if you're not a big company that has a, a PR department or that outsources to you know to somewhere like Diction Schwabble. Sure. Well, essentially, public relations uh, is in place to build, enhance, or maintain your reputation. It's really reputation management, right? So. You had mentioned from big brands right down to uh, individuals. Everybody has uh, has a brand. Everybody has a message. Everybody, everything has a reputation. And so it's our role as publicists to get the word out. Um, and it depends. There are different objectives for everybody. Essentially, it's to make sure that your brand is seen the way that you want it delivered to the public of who you're trying to reach. And it's done so positively. Yeah, so I, somebody, and tell them, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody told me once, like, public relations is doing something good and getting caught doing it. Like, I think I it's like an that. Over, yeah. <laughs> right? over, oversimplified way to say it. Uh, but yeah, what what isn't it? Because I, I feel like sometimes in real estate, and I don't want to put down our whole industry, but, like, too often we we are about us and saying, oh, we just sold something or just listed something. Like, what isn't it? If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I think when you see some of like uh, kind of the old school Mad Men style of like the and that shuck and jive kind of salesman or, you know, it's the smoke and mirrors. It's not. It's not. Yeah. It definitely is not anymore in the 21st century. And here's why is because people see right through that more so with fake news or, you know, kind of like um, just unveiling the who's who. We all have social, uh, you know, lives on social uh, social media now. And I mean, it just goes beyond the depths of print. Right. So um, at least I can say that on our behalf here, or, you know, what we do is if you're a good, true publicist, then it's you have the best interest of your client. Um, it's not a smoke and mirrors. It's not taking advantage of. It's not being taken advantage of. I think the best way um, to describe the benefit of it and maybe the differentiation, because people there may be, you know, yeah. kind of a fine line, but a little bit of confusion about, oh, it's advertising. When advertising, you pay a certain amount of money to have that specific specific message placed exactly where you want to see it. So if it's on the front page of whatever magazine, on a billboard on 490 or wherever it may be, that's advertising, right? So it's what you want to say, how you want to say it, where you want it to be seen. Public mm -hmm. relations is third-party credibility. So I'm building relationships. Very important for me to have the relationships with the media representatives and the influencers, you know, those thought leaders out there that you want your message and brand communicated by. So I want maybe the Rochester Business Journal because they're a reputable and credible um, company organization brand that's telling the story of, you know, J-Man uh, Realtor. And so it's, I have, essentially built enough of a good relationship, but also delivered a good enough story. We're storytellers, if you're a publicist, right? In the message right. to say, hey, 
this is going to warrant some space. What do you think? And then they say, okay, you know what? I think it's going to reach my target audience because then they're serving a target audience as well. But to say, I think this is good enough to put in print, to put online, to deliver to my target audience and readership. And so that has just boosted your credibility because there essentially there was no, um, how do I phrase this? Return. It's a negotiation essentially for them to say, hey, I think you're worthy of space in my publication. Yes, there are dollars behind it. It's very different than advertising. Right. Yeah. So I think that's a good differentiator. Like what you said, if you're, you're doing a billboard or you're placing an ad or you're doing something that's an advertisement, you're expecting some some type of return, like a call, the phone to ring, somebody to inquire to your website or something along those lines where, you know, from a public relations standpoint, me having a, an article saying that I'm the top, you know, I was on the Spartan TV show. Right. right. That, that that may not have a direct benefit to my business, but you said like it's helping to build credibility. Right, and, your and brand awareness. Brand awareness, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in, in this day and age with, with Google, you know, anytime somebody wants to do something, they grab their phone and go, hey, okay, Google, tell me about the realtor that's coming to my house. Right. Right, and if you don't know what comes up when that happens, you know, right. like you said, you're, 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 it's public awareness where people are gonna judge you before you even walk through the door. And I think that's- right. Where, where you kind of come in, right? So what are the, if, if I am a, just a, in a, you know, sole proprietor, I'm a realtor and I'm thinking about, okay, here's what I'm doing this year. Mm -hmm. My business plan, I'm going to be volunteering. I'm going to be doing, you know, cause we do, realtors do a lot of great things in the community. And I think where they miss is not letting people know, mm -hmm. Right, like I'm volunteering for this organization. We're, you know, um, coming up soon. We're doing something to help fill backpacks for kids in the city, mm -hmm. you know, um, underprivileged children to help make sure that they have school supplies. Mm -hmm. And it's that's circulated throughout the real estate community, but I don't think enough people put it out there to have somebody pick up that story because that that's a good story. Would you agree? I do agree. I do agree. So how could we? If I'm looking, if somebody's looking at their year-long plan or their next quarter or their next 30 days, how can they identify opportunities, you know, to, to I don't want to say pitch because I don't like that word, but to present the opportunities to media folks mm -hmm. to have stories picked up? Yeah. So I think the best approach, and I think kind of to take it to um, the most basic step, which you all will appreciate and totally yes. resonate with, is it's it's the relationship, right? So you can't just pick up and cold call somebody and say, like, I got a great story. And they're like, well, so does everybody else that's filling backpacks or bus, you know, whatever. A lot of right. people are doing really good things. And you are doing really great things that warrant that good awareness. Yes, absolutely. But you are one of, you know, however many hundreds of pitches for four right. letter words to use on your show that right. somebody else is also saying to XYZ reporter or whoever. So they're obviously, you know, just as you're getting inundated all day with emails, you know, somebody that's as you're looking through and looking for flags, somebody that's like, oh, yeah, this person's been hot. I've been working with. Um, you know, like a, kind of a good book of business with them. Um, I owe them a message back or had been waiting for, you know, from them. Not that anybody else is taking a second tier, but you prioritize differently, right? Like based on right. who's in your inbox. So I have a rapport with this person, either haven't talked to him in a long time, whatever. Got to get back in touch. You know, I'm going to give this person a little bit more heightened attention and awareness. So it really starts with the relationship. So if you identify who in the media or who else that, you know, I guess essentially in the media, mostly local, regional, however, however far your book of business spans, um, you identify who would be doing the coverage within your industry and um, you know establishing a relationship. But that's the first part. The second part is you're filling backpacks, but what's different about you filling backpacks versus me filling backpacks? So it's the differentiation. How do you stand out? How is it different? Are you serving... Um, you know, twice as many kids that I am. Are you doing a train the trainer system? So you're teaching kids. It's not just about this one and done. We're going to get you off to school. What happens when their pencils break? Are you there for them in three months? You know, are you doing something sustainable? Like what is different? It's all about, you know, create it's your storytelling. So you've got to tell the story, but you've got to tell them like, here's what's so climactic about my story versus this other person's story. And here's why you should pay attention to me. Then on top of all of that, you got to make it not about you, right? right. 
So right. it's not like, look what I'm doing that's good. It's look what look at the good that this service is doing for these children in this school district. So, so it's about crafting your message, right? Would you and, would you craft it from like a we, the, our organization or whoever you're a part of rather than like, I'm not going to contact them and go, hey, this is Jeremiah. I'm filling backpacks and I'm yeah. great. Do a story, right? right? Would it be more like, okay, the Greater Rochester Association of Realtors and, and has partnered with the Mortgage Bankers Association to provide and then like, would you craft it better? Like, would that yeah. be a better way to approach it? Yes. And you know what I would do is say, what's what's the purpose of that story, right? So what are what is the outcome of that? What are you doing that you, that you all got together? So you're stuffing bags for three to 500 kids in this, like there's your headline. And then, so you make it about them and then in there, who's doing the first paragraph, but who's doing it? This the realtor association or, you know, this partnership with. Okay. All right. That's, I guess there's, we need a lot of help. We need a lot of help, Nadine. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? You don't, you really don't. Cause if you think about it, if you, if you break it down, we have very similar roles, right? Like we're both in client service, it's customer yeah. service. You need to build a relationship with your client. I need to build a relationship with the media and my client. Then I need to build a relationship with my client and the media, right? Um, I think if you break it down and if you just humanize things always in your approach in life and trying to get your brand out there and trying to, you know, um, work with the media, humanizing things, being transparent, being genuine, you know, finding the good in what you're doing and making the connection. That's what that's what you you're doing as a realtor, right? right? I mean, like you're legitimately changing lives. That's one of the top three life changing events in somebody's life, isn't it? It's death, losing a job and buying a home or something, isn't it? Like it's. Yeah. Or maybe getting married might be in there somewhere. Yeah. Maybe top five. <laughs> top five. But, um, you know, this is something that you and I were chatting with, yeah. chatting about offline and just that um, kind of that analogy came up about not treating people as a number, right? Um, and about your approach in that relationship, whether it's to your client or to the media or whoever you're trying to build this rapport with. Um, and we were talking about, hey, you know, you don't just go to the wedding venue and, you know, you hope that they don't look at you like, well, you're number 362 of the 365 weddings that I'm going to do this year. You're like, no, no, no. I want to be, you know, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. General and we're going to have a special day on August 15th. Uh, please don't treat me as a number, you know. So it's really um, humanizing things. I think finding that commonality and uh, and how can you help not be helped. I think that's so powerful. And then when we were talking offline about it, that it translates right into real estate because regardless whether you do 30 transactions or 100 transactions a year, nobody wants to feel like one of your transactions. Right. Like this is the home that they're buying, whether they're just getting married or they're a family that's growing. Like this is their home. It's not mm -hmm. a thing. This is a home that they're, you know, it's it's called the American dream of home ownership. Nobody comes to America to rent a house. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. You know? yeah, so it's like it's 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 so important um, to make it special, right? right. It's just it's exactly like you said that that transaction they're gonna maybe do it once every five to seven years. That's the national average, I think. With millennials, it might be, you know, with the general residents, it might be a little bit less than that. Um, but it all depends, and you still it, it should be special and memorable and and a good experience. Not like okay, guys, I got another client I got to get to. Right. Let's make the decision right now. Right, right. And you know what? And so that's what you need to tailor specifically to each of those clients. And now you'd have to educate me. I don't know like what the average book of business is for you all based on clients, you know, but say you have, say there's 10 in any given month or something. Well, each of those clients, that's an individual. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work because though you don't just have this pool of clients, you have 10 individual, you know, like an individual client that you have to appeal to. Their family's different, their background's different, their current situation's different, uh, their wage, you know, increase is different, you know, whatever their situation may be, their likes, their interests, you need to appeal to, I think, getting to their heart first and then find, you know, the rest should fall in line essentially. Yeah. I like that. We we always we have a saying that we always talk about on our broadcast that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. It, right. It rings true. It doesn't exactly. matter if I'm the most experienced. I sold the most real estate. I have the best market share. If, if I they don't feel like I care about them. Right. Doesn't yeah, matter. 
it's about the people. It's, it's very true. And that, I mean, that just bleeds through from anybody. You can tell when somebody genuinely, you know, is concerned or, you know, has compassion or genuinely cares about your best interests versus like, oh, glad you called. Can't wait till I wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know? Right, 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 right. Totally. Well, let's get back to the, the relationships with media. If somebody doesn't have like a, a you know, a top notch PR firm that they can hire like you guys, is is there, you know, what's the best way for them? Because we have people watching throughout the United States. Sure. Uh, what's the best way for them to identify who their people are, who should they should be developing these relationships with? Yeah, so I, essentially doing your homework, right? Like picking up the paper or getting online or finding out, you know, wherever it is within your, um, oh, hi, Christina, <laughs> with whoever is within your region, you know, and that's where your your um, from a realtor. What am I trying to say here? Your client base is, you know, however yeah, far that the area, goes. the area that we service. Yeah, yeah. Sent, thank you. I told you, I told you I was starving today, so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> falling out. Here. But you know, you find out who's covering that. I mean, you're obviously not going to go to the sports director to talk about you know what you're doing as a realtor. So you identify, and then just like any other relationship, like how did you you know how did you get to know Christina, your wife? You probably picked up the phone. You probably took her out for a coffee, she, right? Yeah, uh, she stalked me around the office. She was like, "Hey, sheer lies, no. everybody. <laughs> I know, I know. You two, I'm very good friends with both of them. So sheer lies. <laughs> no, but again, you just humanize it. You know? Yeah. Hey, introduce a couple lines, two two lines in an email because again, you're trying to cut through the clutter. You can't do this whole litany about like here is all my sports, you know, memorabilia from when I was a kid, and here's where I've been. Like, <laughs> yeah." Keep yeah. it short, concise, Keep it short, short and get sweet. to the point. Keep it simple. Mean, yeah. We'd love, to, we'd love to buy you a cup of coffee. Could come to you at your convenience. And then maybe here are some things. Now, now, why else? Because every, we all have enough friends now, right? Like at this age in our lives. Now we're busy. Right. And so right. what's in it for me, though? So how are you serving? Not you, like the media rep that you're trying to get in touch with and build a relationship yeah. with. How can you serve them? Well, here's how. Because I am, and then give a bit on your, but like a, three sentences on your bio. And I've sold either X or like, what is your like shining moment? Or more importantly, if you, before you even get in touch with these folks, read maybe the last five stories that they've published and find what's, what's trending in your industry right now. How can you help them? How can you serve them with if They've got to write and they're on deadline and they've got to come up with right, you know, some enterprising news stories taking place right now. Mm -hmm. Here's how I think I can be helpful to your story right now either you as a thought leader because you've got all these accolades and credibility and you've done enough in your industry or here you know here are things that are trending right now that i thought would be illuminating to you because i've seen that you've written about xyz okay so if, if you know depending again where they are we have small town big towns i think maybe would it be good advice for them to like just pick up pick up the paper pick up the papers because almost any town has like the penny saver they have this one they have that one right and, and see what the stories are and who's writing them and see it I think what kind of value what I'm hearing you say is like what kind of value I can provide like as, that's right as my field or what I specialize in my area of expertise or something that's like right. that yeah because you're the specialist so I wouldn't and I shouldn't know really what's trending in your industry right now or what's hot you know as a realtor in that market or our marketplace or whatever it may be I would look to you having you know however many years in you're the one you're like you know that's right that's right yep and there, that's essentially a best practice right there is you shouldn't have more than three because nobody's gonna remember them you're not your your listeners aren't and you know they're not gonna have time for it you're gonna right. you're gonna tape maybe like or if you're live it's a good minute or two minutes even if you're taping something that feels like you talked for 15 minutes they're gonna truncate that to like right. 45 seconds okay so you gotta be mindful of that yeah, absolutely. And then, and so then afterwards, you do that. You do a great interview on these windmills and the, and the Lake Ontario. Absolutely, it's gonna affect you know, whatever whatever your opinion is. Right. Your, you do a good a good interview. Now, what's the follow up like after the fact? So, like either? any relationship, right? You court that person. I thank okay. you very much. I know that you had a you know, a complete list there to choose from, and I appreciate you giving me the time. Um, now what's good for them is they too are beholden to a quota just like you are. So if you can share that out, you know, share their story, ask them to go send you the link, share it out, help, help them with their ratings. 
um, help continue to be a service. So after that aired or came out or you had that opportunity a week or so later, whether, however, you know, ping yourself to make sure that you're staying in touch with them. Hey, here's something else that crossed my desk. I, I heard you talking to your producer when we were waiting there on the wings or whatever about what's up, you know, what's coming next. Thought this would be of value to you, even if it's not within your industry. Here's a thought leader that I know. So if you're making connections, right, it's all about helping people. Right. So if there's something else that you can provide personally or professionally, as you're building a relationship, like you're, I'm just going back to your relationship with your wife, but you know, you found out that she loved dogs. You guys got a dog together, right? So that's what you're doing too with this new friend of yours. So that's what you're hoping it'll turn into and you're establishing a friendship. So it's meaningful and real. It's built on trust, you know, helpful. You help me, I help you. Um, but hey, I see that you love corgis. Did you know there's a corgi international event going on? I got tickets. Right. right. Or uh, it's right. just, you know, hey, I heard that you were like in, you were going on vacation and you needed, you know, uh, somebody to help. You needed a, you needed a kennel. Here's where we board our dog. Like the personal um, touch points and opportunities. Okay. Anything you can awesome. do to be helpful personally or professionally goes a long way. Think about how you want to be treated or like your best friend. Right. Somebody. Sure. That's I like that. And then also, like, if you if you did give a good story, they're also going to look to you as a resource when they're at like crunch time and like, man, who gave me a good story on a who short was quick, timeline? Right, right. Who was quick? Because, who yes, you need to be nimble and flexible. They are, they're on deadline. They don't have time to go through any BS. Be there, yeah. you know, be available. And um, always say yes. I always say yes. Yeah. I was going to say something else. It'll come back to me after I eat. I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean, any other advice that you can give? I mean, because we're all kind of beginners in the PR. What about like creating that pre press release or, you know, is, is that something you would recommend for people in real estate or is it just, hey, I have a good story? I mean, you know would you what do I would a do? Formal press I think, release and how, how would you do it? I think um, I would probably say if it's so, if it's very much in its infancy right now for the majority, I would concentrate on servicing the clients. Make that your your number one priority, right? So how can you help support your client with your personal brand? What can you do? What's the point of differentiation? How are you different than your fellow colleague, right? Or your mm -hmm. fellow sales rep? And, um, and let it really stem from there. And then once you establish your niche, then you've got a story to tell, right? So now here's what I've done. Here's what's different. Here's what's new. You know, it, new news is something new and different, essentially new, you know, so you can't go out, especially don't go out there with just, I, you know, something that's not going to be helpful to that reporter because you have, it's the, it's the first impression. You have one chance to make a good first impression. So you want to make sure that you're established in the sense that here's how I could be of service to you. Here's how I am a quality thought leader. Um, you know, I think once you find that out and you find your niche, then you've got something to pitch. Yeah, that's excellent. Well, we have a question here. I think it's from AJ on Christina's profile, um, but he says, "What is what is the best way to fit in with fit in somewhere where you're not used to being at?" So let's say you're at a networking. We're not all extroverted, but there right. are key, say there's key influencers at this event. What are some ways to ingratiate myself or make to fit in? You know, because it's tough, especially you're a business owner, sole proprietor. It's like it can be intimidating. Right. You know, you go to the PGA, and there's all these big people there, and you're like, ah, I'm just a regular person. Right. I think the best, the, the easiest way for me is just to keep it um, very, um, I want to say personal in the best way, right? So I, I'm genuinely concerned about, well, how, what brought you here? How long have you been with the organization? Why do you do what you do? What do you love about what you do? You know, these are some really, these are, the, these are the things I'm genuinely concerned with, you yeah. know, and then I think if you just let that flow organically and you'll find like, if you approach somebody that's just like really either off putting or not, then you move on to the next, there's a thousand people in the room. Right. And right. you kind of just, you keep it um, short and sweet. There was some show I was watching on XXI it was a long time ago, something along the lines of like how they used to educate royalty was the nannies would take the princesses and princes or whoever out into the Rose Garden and they would walk around the court and it, they'd stop at a different bush or plant. And every time they stopped, like the prince or like the children had to engage in a different conversation and change the topic. So maybe oh, find prince a Rose AJ, Garden. You hear that? Yeah. Go, go to uh, Eastman Museum 
and go out in the rose garden. Yeah, go right. right? And every yeah. time you stop, you need to engage me in something different. And that it's that I think that takes a lot of skill. I have I have colleagues here that are just natural, just mm -hmm. natural, you know, just wonderful um, conversationalists. And some it, like I'm starving right now. I, you know, I would be hard pressed to have a good conversation with somebody right now. <laughs> Especially if they're eating something, you'd be like, yeah. I'm sorry, what what is that? What are you eating right now? Can I have some of that? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, just, I thought that was kind of cool. You know, I, you got to practice. Everything in life is practice. AJ, Daddy tells you that all the time, right? <laughs> That's right. So I, I like that. It does take practice to develop your conversational skills. Put yourself in uncomfortable situations is right. the best way to get comfortable doing it. Right. Um, and maybe do a little bit of research about where you're going, what you're doing, right. who's going to be there so that you can talk intelligently about, That's right. about things. That's the best point. Yeah. Preparedness okay. is key. Well, let's get you to lunch. Bad. <laughs> uh, I just uh, again, thank you, thank you so much for for being on here. And I, I think uh, when we once you're on a full stomach, we will uh, put together like a one sheet for them on like just tips and tricks, kind of summar summarizing what we talked about to get started. Because you know you don't have to be you don't have to be good to start, but you have to start to be good. We're great. However like that saying like goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So again, thanks for tuning in. This is J-Man's Ed Talks, episode number 16. Our sole goal is to educate, entertain, energize realtors from all across the country. Thank you so much, Nadine Crimo General from Diction Schwab. But wait, one last plug. You guys do have a media training that you do at your Indeed. company. Indeed. Right? Yeah. Half day, one day. Yeah. Short and sweet it's, seminar. We can train. Yeah. We can. It's scalable. Yes. So if you're a business owner, broker, realtor who's watching this and you're like, there's no way I can do this myself. Well, guess yeah. what? Yeah. You can be trained by experts. They will put you in uncomfortable situations. They'll get you on camera. They'll ask the toughest questions you'll ever be asked that a reporter would never probably ask. So that if you're comfortable with that, you develop that skill set. When you get in front of a live camera and they're saying, how's the market? You can go all day long. Okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. Thanks for Thank having you. me. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.